So, uh, Jimmy, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to see us. Uh, how do you find your few hours in Norway so far? Uh, they've been fantastic. The uh, inside of the hotel is amazing. Um, no, it's it's beautiful, and I'm actually really looking forward today to spending some time in the city, walking around. But uh, the conference is incredible. The speakers are amazing, and to be honest with you, I mean, I go to a lot of these conferences, and this is really uh, an unbelievable level of talent. Happy to hear that. Yeah. So I really enjoyed your uh, your presentation. Um, one of the things I I, uh, I found really interesting was uh, how you guys work with with headlines yeah. and and how you how you uh, land on the right headline. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell me a little about the process of, of developing headlines and, and testing and stuff like that? So it's an art and a science, right? We study patterns. We know we tend to know what works, but it's also like moments of creativity. Um, a headline there's any number there can be like 10 different ways that you get up to the right headline you know you could have you could be a, just a brilliant editor yourself you write the piece you write a great headline everybody's like that's a great headline and then you go from there more frequently what happens is someone will toss out a headline to a small group of people and they'll say how do you think we can what can we do to make this better someone else will come in with a one word someone else will say maybe you try it like this and someone else will say you should try it like this 50 emails later you have your perfect headline and that's actually usually the way that we get our most successful headlines is through group brainstorms and and through emails it's mostly email you'd be surprised like it's actually a lot of email that contributes to it one of the pieces that i showed in my presentation took 51 emails to get to the right headline oh wow but you have to be disciplined i mean you have to actually care that much about headlines you have to pay that much attention to headlines it's actually incredibly important yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, the one thing I like that that you guys have a lot of stats behind the the, the, the scene on yeah. how your your content reacts. Do you think yeah. that's uh, an important factor to make people actually care about the headlines and the reality and the and the shares? I think so. It's not the end of the the sort of story, right? Like just because a lot of people saw something doesn't necessarily mean it was a success or a failure. But it's really important that when people see that they change something, that the traffic actually changes as a result of whatever it is they decided to tweak. So for us, real-time feedback, instant feedback on a headline, on an image, on what's performing well on Facebook versus what's performing well on Twitter, these are all very valuable metrics. Cool. And do you do a lot of testing of the headlines and all the images and the sharing text and stuff like that? We're doing a lot of A-B testing both on the site and on Facebook and on Twitter all the time. Like we're constantly trying new conventions saying like, what if you did it like this versus like this? We're always trying that kind of stuff. In fact, if you go to our front page, you're probably seeing one headline and your friend who goes to the same site at the same moment may see something completely different. Is that uh, your own tools for testing or do you just, how, how does it actually work? What kind of tools do you use? HuffPost built and has invested lots of time and money into building all of our own technology. And part of the reason is because we can then adjust it as the internet changes, right? So when something tw changes, we can quickly change our tools. Uh, so we've actually built all of those tools in-house. Lucky. Yeah. yeah. It takes a lot of time and investment, but I actually think one of the most interesting parts about media and publishing now is how important the technology is in a way that it wasn't, you know, maybe 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, it's much, much more important for people to stay at the cutting edge now. And for us, that means investing a huge amount of time in technology, a huge amount of money in technology, but also our editors and our technologists actually sit on the same newsroom floor. They work very closely together. So I am constantly in touch with technologists and what they're doing, that kind of thing. Cool. Uh, one last question. Uh, what advice would you give, give to uh, content marketers to create successful content now in 2014? Some of the advice I would give them is the same advice that they probably would have heard 30 to 40 to 50 to 100, 200 years ago. Have a great story to tell. Have a great product to market. If you're trying to tell a great story for something you don't believe in, people will see right through it. If you're trying, if you have a great product, but your story isn't compelling, or you're not giving people a reason to care, you're not giving them an emotion to hang on, they're not, no one's going to get excited about it. Some of what I would tell them now is very different, which is social media can be your best friend. It can also be your worst enemy, but it can also be your best friend if you use it in the right ways. People, if you give people a reason to share your story, they will share it and it has the potential to go viral. So always think about kind of what is the part of the narrative that people want to share. A great example is actually that I think people talked about it, but that Volvo ad with Jean-Claude Van Damme doing the splits, 
that was good content and it was very shareable because it evoked an emotion and the emotion was awe. Awe is one of the most viral emotions that's out there in addition to like humor and anger. Awe is actually one of the most powerful viral emotions. But if you're a content marketer and if you take a step back when you're doing something and you say, what is the emotion that I'm trying to evoke and is it strong enough that people will press share once they're done? If you can answer yes to both of those, or you can answer the question of the emotion and then answer yes to the question of sharing, you'll probably be in a pretty good place. Thank you so much for your time, man. Thank you. Awesome.